Hello and welcome back to the shop and for those of you that are here for the first time, welcome to the shop. So the project for today is going to be converting the cross slide on my lathe from the original small dial here to a, a large dial. Now this large dial is an original salt bend part. This was given to me by a good friend Brad Jacobs, some of you guys may know him. He has, also has a YouTube channel, kind of looks like me, kind of talks like me, though his accent's more New Jersey, but we'll forgive him for that. Uh, he rebuilt the salt bend and he added combination metric and imperial reading dials to it and decided to pass the original imperial only reading dial onto me. So, why don't you check out his channel? He used to be in the basement, but now he has graduated to the garage and actually has his own company. So, check his channel out up there. Give him a like and a subscribe, and thanks for the dial, Brad. So, this project it is not going to have anything to do with actually physically making this dial. I will provide the measurements of this dial so you can replicate it. Basically to replicate this is relatively simple shape uh, but you will need some sort of way to index and mark it. So that's beyond the scope of this project. These can be had on eBay. Every once in a while you'll find them. They're kind of starting to get expensive so just be aware you might end up having to make one or have make one and then have somebody stamp the letters and or the numbers rather and markings in there for you. Why don't we go over to the bench and take a look at what we're dealing with and what this project entails. I'll give you a list of materials that you're going to need and a list of more specialized tooling than say your normal turning tools. So why don't we go out on the bench and take a look at what we're dealing with. Okay, so there are two good reasons why we're going to be turning this into a large dial. One, just the physical size of it makes it way easier to read. Okay, and also the large dials, the bushing here is different. So here, this is just a plain bushing. It's just a solid piece of metal. Now the actual backlash in your cross slide comes from anywhere on your screw or the feed nut, but also in this case comes from any play between this face here and this face here. So every time you turn the screw, what will happen is it will take up that gap as it goes and that contributes immensely to the amount of perceived backlash. Now the only way to get rid of this or to, to mitigate it somewhat is to take and put a spacer in between this collar, your graduated collar here, your graduated dial, and that bushing collar and kind of take up some of that slack. Now, on the large dial bushing is a little bit different. The way this is, is you can see it has a pocket here. Inside that pocket rides a ball thrust bearing. And on the outside face here between this and the spline shaft and this face here rides another ball bearing. And then sandwiching the whole thing together is the large dial and this hand wheel on the outside. This large dial is able to spin freely on a little mini bushing inside that will be pinned to the shaft. So it kind of look like that when it's together. So you're taking up this space by being able to tighten down this collar and the hand wheel together to take up all that slack and let it ride on those two bearings, effectively taking out all the play and leaving the only perceived backlash from your screw. So what we're going to do today is we are going to make this bushing. Okay, this extension that holds that. So the whole scope of this project is to make this bushing make this inside collar and then also we're gonna have to modify this feed screw to extend this shaft out further because of the physically larger bushing and also since we're in here and we know we got a ton of wear on our screw we're gonna be replacing that screw with a new Acme rod so basically the only piece of this 
feed screw that we're going to be reusing is going to be this section here with the spline shaft and the hand wheel. Everything else will be new. Alright, before we get into the tools that we're going to need, I just want to explain one quick thing. And first, I do want to thank Rick for uh, actually measuring his cross slide bushing and he actually made up some drawings for me to use. Now the problem is through here through the middle is a is a 5 8 shaft and there's a 5 8 bearing on this end and a 5 8 bearing on this end. The problem comes in in that the thread here is inch and an eighth meaning that the actual hole through it is roughly an inch in diameter. A standard 5 8 inside diameter ball thrust bearing, the outside diameter is larger than one inch. So this will not fit into the cross slide. Now, South Bend used a proprietary bearing right here on the edge that touches this spline. It can be had, you can get it. I have looked around on the internet and found a couple of posts on some online forums of somebody that had bought one of these or special ordered it uh, I believe from Motion Industries or something like that, but it cost them seven, $75. So since we're going to have to modify this screw anyway, we're going to be using a half inch shaft from here to here with a half inch bearing where this outside diameter is 15 sixteenths so it can fit right down that hole. Now as far as critical dimensions go, since this is the new write-up, I had to make a test piece to make sure that I got all the dimensions correct. The critical distances you have are the distance from here, so this face here, to the end. So from here to this face, plus the diameter or, or width of the bearing, needs to be able to sit flat up against the end of this spline shaft with zero play. So on your lathe, I suggest that you measure that just to be sure it matches up with mine. There could be some slight variations with the wear on your lathe. Also, the only other critical dimension that you have here is the bearing fit right here. So, the bearing numbers are in the description below, and I'll actually show them later, but you're going to want to make sure, you're going to want to mic the outside diameter and the actual width of these bearings to see if it matches up with my measurements here. As far as any special equipment goes, we will be using the same lathe that we're modifying to make this part. Now you're going to preferably want a four jaw because we're going to be turning the pot around or an extremely accurate three jaw. I really suggest a four jaw for this. Everything that we're going to do can be made on the same lathe you're modifying. If you do have another lathe, it'll make your life a lot easier when you remove this shaft, but I'm going to show you a way around that when we get to it. Also, you're going to see me use a mill. You don't really need to use a milling machine. I'm going to be using the milling machine to put this octagon on this pot right here. You don't really need that. That's just a way to tighten this into the screw slot. So all you need to really do if you don't have a mill is just drill a hole in here and you can use a pin spanner to tighten it in. Tooling wise the only special things that you're going to need is a 501 thousandths oversized reamer that will be to ream the hole down the center of this clearance for our half inch shaft and a 7 16 reamer which we're going to be using to replace this when we replace the screw. You're also going to need a length of Acme screw stock, which you can get in any supplier. As far as actual tooling itself, besides your normal threading tools, turning tools, things like that, something that is going to be very beneficial to you is a thread wire set. Uh, you don't really need this. All this is going to be used for is to measure the th pitch diameter of this to match it, which you can do instead of that is you can make up a piece that fits your threading and use it as a gauge. Just thread it yourself. The only reason why we're going to be using this is because this is a um, inch, in, inch and an eighth or inch and a sixteenth by sixteen 
TPI, it's an oddball thread. You're not going to be able to get a tap for it to make a gauge easily. Another good thing to have on hand is a depth mic. Um, you know, besides your normal measuring tools of, of calipers and micrometers, a depth mic will help you a lot. You'll be able to measure each one of these features to get an accurate measurement of it. And you're going to definitely want some way, some way to accurately measure carriage travel. It'll make your life a lot easier. This is just a clamp that I made up real quick in the mill. It clamps right to the bed and allows this to ride against the carriage and give me accurate uh, distance movement of the carriage. You can also use one of those magnetic ones also. Uh, as far as tooling goes, that's all you really need. Uh, as far as stock goes, you're going to want at least a three inch piece of stock, a three inch round piece of stock for this dial. This dial is slightly over three, in three inches. If you can get like a three and a sixteenth, a three and an eighth, so you can true it up, that'd be even better. This happens to be the only thing that I could get, which is three and three quarters of an inch. So you see how much I have to come off of this. A uh, six inch piece should be more than enough for you. As far as alloys go, you really don't need anything crazy. Just get something that's easy to machine. You'll be surprised at how many pots on these lays are made out of leaded stock. And actually, that's what this is. And it's going to be more than adequate for a little bushing like this. And then, again, you're going to need your Acme threaded rod, which is a 5 8 8 left-hand thread. And you're going to need two half inch inside diameter ball thrust bearings. Your McMaster car number is 665K17. And also your McMaster car number for this threaded stock is down in the description. So why don't we get up on the lathe and we'll get this sucker indicated and actually start making a pop. Okay, so... I just want to show you where I came up with my measurements and this is something you're going to want to double check on your lathe just to see there might be some variations between different lathes, different wear patterns and things like that. So all we're using right now is a pair of calipers with one of those little depth attachments and that's been set flat on my surface plate. The reason why we're using this instead of a depth micrometer is we can't get the depth micrometer in there because of this shaft. So now I don't know how well it shows up on camera but this face is proud of this little, little flange that's inside here and that little flange is where that part rides. So we want to just quickly measure the difference between the two faces there. And I'm getting about 15 thousandths. Okay, so now that we have that 15 thousandths, we're going to measure from this face all the way into that spline. So, I'm going to measure in a, in a few different areas. 2 inches, 845 thousandths. 2 inches, 848 thousandths. Two inches, eight hundred and forty-seven thousandths, and two inches, eight hundred forty-seven, eight hundred forty-eight thousandths. So you can see that there's a little bit of variation just from where I just rounded up to two inches, eight hundred and fifty thousandths. That'll give me an extra couple of thousandths to play with, because when we cut this off, I'm gonna, I want to face that edge flat. So I took that two inches, eight hundred and fifty thousandths. Subtracted the 15 thousandths here and then subtracted the width of the bearing, which in my case is um, 249 thousandths. And that is how I came up with the distance from here to here on our new part. If you guys get a few different readings, then you may have to change this dimension, add a little bit to this edge. So just be aware of that. I want you guys just to double check your machines also because um, you want a nice tight fit on that bearing. You don't want to compress it, but then again, you want uh, both sides to touch. You want no play in it. 
Alright, just for the record, and I found the worst spot, the most worn spot on this screw, and including all that play in this, you'll see what I mean when I crank it. I have, you can see how it cams out, about 55 thousandths worth of backlash in this crossfeed screw and system. So after we're done, we'll compare it to that and see how much we improved. Okay, so we have everything all set up. Uh, I'm on center. I just made a quick little test cut to make sure I was on center right. I am. And we're at uh, about five, five inches, uh, five and three quarter inches. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to face this off and put our center in there. And we're going to carve in all the features up until this face right here. Okay, then we're going to flip it around and then we're going to face it to length and then cut in that last feature. Now I have a lot hanging out here. In other words, I don't have it all the way into the jaws. The reason being is I want a nice area to be able to indicate on this when I flip it around. So let me just finish facing this off. We can pop a center drill in there and get our center up in there. Just feeding this by hand just so I don't have to change the uh, lathe feed direction. I'm not worried about surface finish or anything like that. Most of this is going to get taken off. Okay, so we're going to take this diameter down here. We're going to take it down to uh, 3 inches, 200 thousandths. So we're just going to do that up until these chuck jaws. I just wanted to take a second and measure this. Uh, now, when I put this lathe together, um, I haven't done any work yet with the tailstock, so I kind of I centered this using a test bar and everything else. But I want to see uh, if I have to move it. So it should be uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, three inches, five hundred and fifty thousand. So.
3 and 5, 51 and 3 and 5, 51 and a half. And this over here, we are at 3 inches. Five fifty two and three tenths. So we're we're within uh, less than a thousandth over this whole diameter here. I don't think I really want to play with that that much. Okay, so we have the outside diameter here down to three inches and 53 thousandths. We need to take this down to three inches and two thousandths. So we got about 51 to come off of there, and that is the outside diameter of our dial. Now, I let this cool down. As this was cooling down, I just swept up all the chips on the floor, because if I drag any metal chips to the upstairs of this house, my wife will kill me. So our entire length of our piece is gonna be five inches. 183 thousandths. I should have more than that here, but we can just double check. Yeah, I got about five inches, 95 thousandths. So what we're gonna do is our last cut, we're gonna come in here to this corner and face out so we have a nice sharp edge there. And then basically this piece that you see here as, as the grab stock for right now, we'll end up facing that off at the end. Now, I'm gonna have to flip this around at one point and then you might be able to get away with doing it a little bit different or when I flip this around, you might be able to get away with putting this a little further in your chuck than I will. Reason being is I have in this lathe is a small spindle, so I only have a one inch through hole. Um, the large spindle through holes on the third on the 13 inch is inch and three eighths, so you'll be able to fit the whole piece in. Uh, unfortunately, I won't. So when we do flip this around, when we come to the point where we flip this around, I'm gonna have a little bit more stock hanging out than you will. So, right now we're just gonna take this cut here. I've already dialed in, I've dialed in um, 20 thousandths, which is gonna take 40 thousandths off our diameter to leave us 10 for our finish. Now, when you want to drag your tool back over and you don't want it to drag and make that spiral pattern, just grab the top of your tool post, give it a little tug back, and that'll take the spring out of it and you won't backtrack over it. Alright, so we're just going to double check where we are, just make sure we are tracking correctly. So this is telling me I have about uh, thirteen thousands to come off. So I'm going to go five and six thousands on the dial. That'll give me twelve off. That'll probably leave me about one or two proud, and then I can just polish that. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come into that edge, 
We're gonna dig in. I'm gonna walk the carriage down. I'm gonna change my feed. And we're gonna face that outside edge. Okay, by facing this outside edge, when we flip it around, that'll give us another point to be able to indicate off of if we need to. So now I know for a fact I'm going to be a little proud. And I am about two thousandths proud. Yep, I am uh, four thousandths right there. Three inches and four thousandths. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to polish this up just so it's nice and shiny. And I'm going to be using emery cloth. Alright, what I'm going to polish up that last couple of thousands. When you're using emery cloth on the lathe, try to cover your ways as best you can. Also, when you use it, make sure you have a very long strip. Okay? So that way there. Once you get this around, you're standing real far away. Let me zoom out so you can probably see me a little bit better. You can see how far my hands are away from the chuck. If anything happens and this catches, all I have to do is just let go. I'm not going to get sucked into the machine. Okay, so you can see that's all polished up. We got all the tool marks out of there. When we're completely done, we can take this a buffing wheel to this on my buffer and polish it up really nice and bright. 